I think you ought to do better than that. We're going to give it, we'll give it a hand to Jesus now. Come on. Come on. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on. The Lord. It's all because of him. All because of him. Now, it's all because of him, and, and, and it's, this is my wife. How long have we been married, honey? Huh? 68 years, almost 69. Almost 69. That's all my life. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to keep her. I hope she keeps me. <laughs> but it's such an amazing day to be here. I want you to hear from God today. I don't want you to hear me. I want you to hear God. If God has a message for you today, it'll be worth your time. If he doesn't, stay home. I think a lot of preachers would be better off if they stayed home too. But I've had a word from the Lord for this congregation. I tell you, I could be in a lot of places today. I have invitations from big, big churches. I had one from San Francisco call me a while ago and said, come, I'll come after you. And I said, no, that's not what God said right now. I want you to know that God sent me to this congregation, to this man. I don't go to churches. I go to the preacher. I go to the pastor. When I was just a little tiny church of less than 100, I could have the best preachers in the world. They would come because of me. They knew me. They didn't come because of the church. I never looked at the church. I never looked at the size. I believe that God's given me a revelation of what's going to happen here. Would you like to know about your church? Would you like to really know? Would you like to know what's going on right now? now I'm getting some here. Don't worry about it. And it's not a hearing aid either. How many of you know what's inside this back? Nobody does. She does. But she's never heard what I'm going to say today. This congregation has the potential of being the greatest church in the world right here. Now, I'm not just talking. I'm saying what God said. If we catch the vision of what I'm talking about, and we hear what God is saying, this is not going to be just an area-wide church of this area. It'll be a church that will touch nations of the world. You've been in all nations, brother. You know your, your, your pastor is qualified. He's one of the most qualified young preachers I've ever met. And I met her, young preachers, all the time. Seminarians, people that have large churches. They fly in from all over. I have them coming in this week from Tulsa. I have them coming in from Phoenix, from everywhere you can think of, because we sit with them. And we have what I call a revelation room, where I invite them. In. It's my home. And I invite them into this room where they can just get a revelation from God. And spend time in his presence. And let God talk to him. You know, preachers have got to be refilled once in a while too. You have to go back to the service station once in a while. Get up and let him gas you. Hallelujah. God's doing some things today that are extraordinary. He's not just an ordinary God. He's an extraordinary God. God spoke to me and said, I'm going to do some things here with this congregation. See, I have had the experience of being with a lot of new congregations that have literally exploded. Some of the greatest churches in America today, I've been there when they first, first kicked off. And I've been around a little while, so I know what God's doing. Well, I'll tell you what's in this sack. You want to know? Yeah. This has the potential of being 
a redwood tree. It is a redwood seed. You get 20 of them, 12 of them on one penny. That's not, that's not very much, is it, penny? I got one here, too. Yeah, there's a penny here. They haven't taken up the offer yet. <laughs> they call it penny cost. Yeah. Now, you can get 12 of these seeds on one penny. Incredible, isn't it? I'm talking about giant redwood trees that tower into the heavens that are, if you laid, it, uh, laid them down flat, they're taller than a football field. They're, they're, they're taller than 35 stories high. They're like skyscrapers. They are so mighty and so big that you can't believe it when your eyes fall on them. California has been blessed. We have these giant redwoods all up the coast, 500 miles up the coast. Now, if you want to turn to a text of Scripture, you've got to have something in the Word, you know. In Isaiah chapter 61, that's the favorite verse of Jesus' head. When they brought to him the Scriptures, and they brought a great roll, and they said, now please read the roll. And he read the roll. And he says some words here, and it's taken from the 61st chapter of Isaiah. This is the scripture that he read. It's his favorite text. Isn't that wonderful? That I'm speaking today on his favorite text. All the things in the word he could have chosen, he could have chosen any of the Psalms, but there was only one place he chose, and this was the, this was the verse. And I'm going to read the whole thing here because I want you to get the context of it. You've got to hear this. Everybody say it with me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, say it better than that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Boy, you better get this now. When it gets into your hold of you, it'll get a hold of you now because it's not just out there. The Holy Ghost is here. He's right here today. And you're a temple of the Holy Ghost. Hear what I'm telling you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings. What's God saying? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, they went everywhere preaching, teaching, and healing. Let me tell you something. God's still in the business today. You don't get it in one word. This man's a preacher. He's a pastor. He's got a pastoral heart. He loves people. That's what it takes. It takes somebody that will be able to break the word of God and give you an exegesis, an intelligent word of the Lord that will get into your spirit, that will shape your life. That's what the word preaching means. Teaching, yes, teaching. Uh, preaching is, is evangelism, but teaching is, is, is what I just got through explaining to you. Now, evangelism is necessary. You say, where are the evangelists? You're the evangelist. Come on, watch out now. God never intended for this man to do it all. It's impossible for one man to do everything. He can teach you, but I want you to know that you're due to the reaching. You know why we had such a great church? It wasn't because a great pastor was there. It was because I let God do it. God said, when I came to Orange County, he said, you pastored churches, and I'd had 10 years in evangelists, and really, I was an evangelist, and I'm still an evangelist. I'll always be an evangelist. Wherever I go, people get saved. They can't help it. I just know how to introduce people to Jesus. I just tell them about my best friend. And invariably, they fall into it. I just ask them. I don't, I don't think you have to be offensive. You just go to people to whom you're sent. If you're sent, something will happen. If you're not sent, they just went. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of preachers that just went. They've not been sent. But we've been sent. You've been sent to this place. Lord, I never thought anybody would build a church in this place. It would be the last place in the world in Southern California. But God chose this place. I said God chose this place. God chose this man. He is the pastor 
There's one vision. It's not your vision. It's not somebody else's vision. It's the vision that God put in this man. And I'm here to support his vision. I'm here to tell you something, that God wants you to get in line. If God sent you to this church, you don't have any choice. You've got to stay where you are. There's some people looking for a church where they can kind of go and be entertained and what's kind of a new song you got now. And, and oh, we've got to have somebody that's, that is, that's special, uh, like we want, you know. But God knows that we need to get over that kind of thinking and begin to think this is going to be different. We're going to a place where we're sent. We've been sent. Of Everybody say it here. I'm sent. I'm sent, I'm sent here. This is my church. It's God's church. And I'm part of it. And nobody's going to tell me differently. I'm going to defend it. I'm going to stand up for it. I'm going to talk about it all the time. I'm going to get so excited about it that I give it to everybody I talk to. And I, everybody's going to know about this church before I get through. You don't know it, but I know the hills around here are even talking about this church already. And I have, I have people, or this, if they knew I was going to be here, I can guarantee you, you would never been able to handle the people that have come into this place. I'm known in this area. There's, a, there's one little lady up here on top of the hill I was telling your pastor about that she has, she opens up her home and she can't get them all in when she just says, come. Now, she's not pastoring a church. She just, she's a great prayer lady. You know that she's the daughter, the granddaughter of Parham. You ever heard of Parham? The one who started all this thing? The one that got filled with the Holy Ghost in 1901? And Agnes uh, Osmond came, and, uh, and uh, she received the Holy Spirit and spoke Chinese? Yeah, I've been there at that school, and I know what it is in Topeka, Kansas. I pastored in that town. Where is my Patekin kid that was there in Topeka? Wave on him. I want to know if I'm here. All right. Well, he's supposed to be here. Is he in? Already left me? No words. Stand up and shout. Oh, he, he was a little baby when I was in that church. And Ethel Mae used to bring you to church. The most precious lady. Oh, she's, she had a bun on the back of her neck. And I thought, I thought that thing was going to explode. She was the sweetest thing you ever met in your life. She loved missions. She loved people that are lost. She loved to take care of little children and bring them into church. You ought to get your house in order and begin to bring children in here. Yes, we got children, but we ought to have more children. And we want more children. You know why God says pastors ought to be have, have a husband and wife and have children? Because you don't even understand what a church is like unless you have a family. This is a family church. This is a family building. This is a family altar. Oh, glory to God. I may start shouting. I, I hear this is a dance studio. I'd like to find out. <laughs> glory to God. I'm not too old. Don't you think I am? Let me tell you something. I've got the power of God moving inside of me, and the Holy Ghost is inside of me, and you're going to hear what God has to say. Now, it's a sent church. God's going to send people in here, send ministries. He'll send the best people. You, we need leadership here. You know how do you get leaders? You begin to pray them in. Oh, yeah. Pray you the Lord of the harvest. He'll send forth laborers. God's going to send workers here. No volunteers. I don't want volunteers. You, volunteers do what they want to do. They don't get paid. But, but not enlistees. Boy, I've, listed, I've enlisted in the army of God. I'm well paid. Praise God. I, I tell you what, God pays his people well. We're going to be rewarded as saints of God. We need to get a hold of this thing and let it get a hold of us. Begin to say, there's no sacrifice that's too great. If, he, if this pastor says, be here at 3 o'clock in the morning, we'll be here at 3 o'clock in the morning. If he says, do this, we'll do that. Why? Because we're going to receive that. <laughs> oh, praise God. Now, here we come. I didn't get to finish that text of Scripture. You didn't think I was going to get there, did you? Yeah, I, I'm not through yet. That's why I ask for a lot of time. I usually I preach about 15, 20 minutes. But I don't know. I may preach an hour and a half today. You don't know. Now you get up, I'll know there's something wrong. And I've got a songbook here, and I'll throw it at you, and I'll hit you every time. 
I'm mild this morning, I tell you that. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He's anointed me. Everybody said, He's anointed me to preach good tidings to them that are meek. Not weak, but meek. He has sent me. Everybody say, send again. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. Oh, there's so many broken hearted people in this world today and all around us. All around us, they're broken hearted. Look at it. And he sent me. And he, he, he gave. He gave claim liberty. He, he, he gave me only to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. They're demon possessed people. They're going to be gloriously delivered today because of God's power. Praise God. And to proclaim the acceptable leer of the Lord, the day of vengeance, the day of our God. And to comfort all that mourn. You're going to have not mourning anymore. You're going to have joy in the Holy Ghost. And to appoint them. Now we're coming to my text. Be ready for it now. When I hear it. To appoint unto them the, that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Are you ready? And joy for the mourning. Uh -huh. That the garment of praise. What do you got on? Oh, I got a garment on. It's a praise garment. It's, it, it's the garment of God. It's the garment that God put on me. I have the garment of praise. And I tell you, the spirit of heaviness. We got to get rid of that heaviness. We don't need heaviness. God took it that we might be called the trees of righteousness. Right standing. Clearness integrity all the way through. They may have all turned sour. You knew a lot of preachers that have failed, but there's one that hasn't failed, and that's God. And God Almighty is looking for righteousness today. He's not going to have any foolishness today. He's going to have righteousness before he gets through. He's going to have a pure heart, a pure church, a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Come on. God thinks now, we, well, think in the world that we're around us, there's no standard. There's no gospel. There's nobody else that holds it up. But this church does hold it up. They believe in something. They believe that God can keep you from the devil. They believe that God can keep you from the world. They believe that you can live like God wants you to live. There's a difference in living like God wants you to live. That we would call the trees of righteousness. And that word trees of righteousness is translated in one of them that you might be called the trees of oak. That's the best they knew. That means substantial. That means lofty. That means beautiful. This is all in the Amplified. You'll see it there. Oh, that's why it says, and I don't think I don't know anything taller and more lofty than the redwoods. Well, I walked with them, and I know what I'm talking about. I walked through those trees. And heard them. It just seems like that the trees begin when the winds begin to blow. You know there's something going on. It's almost like human beings that are praising God. And I see those limbs lifting up. And I think of those uplifted hands. And I say, oh, look, they're praising God right now. And they stand up there. Way like nails on their, uh, uh, turned upside down. And they're, like, they're standing up into the heavens. And they begin to praise First of all, we're going to talk about the, 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 the trees of God are promised of God. God made a promise that we'll be like him, that we'll be like those trees. And you are standing tall for God today. This is going to be like a mighty giant church. You are a church that's without spot or wrinkle. You're going to be unique. People will look at you and they'll say, what is going on over there? They're not goofy like some of these churches. You, some people think they get spiritual. You have to be crazy. You have to be kind of off-centered. No, you don't. You've got to be people that are sold on God, and God's sold on you. And when you have that divine entwinement and, and interchange with God, you have a, an ability to grow into places that you can go in God, and God will take you to those places where you become what God wants you to be. Now, God said, he's, first of all, it's a promise. And then the next thing is that we're planted. We're planted by the Lord. 
It's incredible to think that this little seed here that I showed you is so tiny, and yet it can become so great. Who ever thought of the early church? Those people that were really told that, that Jesus is going to live again, and now their, their Savior had died. He had been crucified on the cross. Everything was over. 500 people heard this, but only 120 of them went in. What happened to the 380? They stayed aside. They never got into this place. 120 of them got into a prayer meeting. God said, I'm going to do something. Glory to God. Come on, get, a, get ready to shout a little bit here. Yeah, it's just a little place. Just a little 120 in a little mission room. And I've been in that room up there in Israel where they go into that room. And I have forgot where I was, and I thought I was in a Holy Ghost place. And I started speaking. And one of my men received the Holy Ghost right there in that upper room. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, it's not unusual for me to preach on the Holy Ghost because I'm not a Holy Ghost preacher. I mean, that's all I know is the Holy Ghost. Everywhere I go, I preach on the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he's my best buddy. He tells me about Jesus. He's the one that teaches me about things to come. And I live in Revelation. I don't preach on what happened last year or the year before. I talk about what Jesus is doing today and tomorrow. Glory to God. You're going to have it because you can have it if you pay the price for it. But there's a price to pay if you're going to walk with God. Get ready for what I'm telling you now. This is coming. It's coming. It's coming, I said. And, and then so it, we've been planted. God took that little seed. It has to have the right type of temperature, about 40 degrees, 50 degrees, too hot some places. I brought one of those redwoods home one time, and I was going to grow one in my backyard here in Southern California. They just don't grow here. It just hung its head, and it never could get its head up. Why? Because it wasn't the right temperature. You know where they grow? It's where the winds blow. It's where it's icy, where, where it's hard. We're up on the mountaintops, down those places where you would never believe that something could grow. But God has a towering redwood tree that's the biggest specimen of living things in the world. Why? Because it's a testimony. That's where, that's where his real work is doing and going today. God's doing some new things today. So he's growing his church. I said he's growing his church right now. His church, can you see it growing? Can you see it growing? Can you see it going up? Can you see that tree going up high? There it is. You can't even see the top of it anymore. It reaches right into heaven. Well, praise God. And I don't like to get too excited because, you know, I, I, I teach my boys, don't do that. Don't scream at them. Jesus never screamed at them. And I don't mean to, but I get so excited about what God's doing, I don't know whether I can hold it or not. Yeah, because it's been promised of God. The, the, I'll give you the four steps. It may not get to a, but you're promised, you're planted, and uh, you're promoted, and you're praised, and you're protected. So I'm going to come up there close to the end now. I'm going to tell you this before long. You know when a preacher tells you he's, he's, he's about through? That means he's got no more an hour. <laughs> and finally, brethren, you read that in Scripture, and finally, brethren, Paul says, it goes on preaching until a guy falls out of the church, out of the window. And that guy was sitting in the window looking down, you because his name. And he saw, must have seen a horse going by. And guy, Paul was long preaching. And just as he was bending over about that time, that, that kid fit out. And that didn't bother him. He didn't interrupt his service at all. He continued preaching. He went down and had a healing service. God raised him up. You know, I believe God raises up people like that. I happen to be, I couldn't raise a fly, but I've happened to be close to people when they were dead, and God raised them up. I've had five that I was there, I visited. I didn't do anything about it. I just was there to see it. But I know what God can do. God gave me life in the first thing, and God can give life again if he chooses. Whatever he does, he can do. He has my permission. Amen. I'm going to go out and, and uh, raise the dead. You say, well, why don't you? Because I can't. Because I'm going to tell you that only God can do that. He's the resurrection. All I've done is walked in, 
My song leader died. I won't tell this story, but I'm already on it. I'll tell you that next time I come. Anyway, we had my song leader. He was raised up. My, then my also my, the head of my school, Dr. Harrison, was raised up. And I can tell you about some of the others. And I'm going to tell you God's not through yet. He's going to do some things that are phenomenal in this day. You better keep your eyes open. I said you better keep your eyes open and your ears open. Now, the, the Lord says that we'll be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. God planted you. God planted you in this church. God planted you in this place. You dare not try to move from it. You stay with it. Now, you're never, the moment you find your property, you can't stand here long. It has not been ordained to be. God said this is a starting place, but this is not the ending place. God wants you to have properties that are large enough to accommodate whatever he's going to do. We got up so that there were 18,000, according to papers, that attended every Sunday for the church's services. That's multiple services. I didn't know that, but I went one day by a Catholic church, and they had six services, and I didn't know it. So I said, well, if they had six, we'll go back, and we'll have six. I didn't have any associates. I didn't have anybody to help me. I was the only preacher there. But you know the strange thing is that I didn't know that they had six so I had to have all those services myself, and I had six of them before I got through. Uh, five preaching and one communion service. And I tell you something, folk. I tell you that God gives you the strength, and he's going to give you a mighty, mighty move of God if you reach out to him and just say, Lord, it belongs to us here. We're going to have that revival. We're going to have that revival. Are you in it? Are you in that revival now? Listen, God wouldn't take me and tamper with me all night long about what he's doing here this morning if he didn't intend to do something special. Glory to God. Yeah. Do I know you? Where have I met you? I don't know you, do I? Well, I know one like you. It's your twin. It's all right. It's all right. All right. I'm going to tell you, God knows you. Did you know that? Yeah. I said, God knows you. Praise the Lord. Now, you can look at these trees and realize how old some of them are. Some of them are older than, well, Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, and he's still here. But he went on to heaven. You know that. But you can cut a tree and, and begin to saw it crossways. And when you get down and you look cut through and you see the circles there, you get a history of that tree. There's a dry time that they went through. That was a period there of special growth. And every time is really spoken to you about the trees. Ain't interesting that trees have a certain ability to draw water. They have a vacuum to suck up that water. And you see how, how tall they're going to get. Well, they only get as high as that water gets up there. They have, that water has to come all the way down. Remember now, all those stories, all those feet that he has to reach up and take that water up, but that sap takes it up, and he gets that water, that, that, that simple place where he's been close to a river or something, and, and he has a different root system. The root system's quite involved. You know, most trees have tap roots. It's, they go down. Not this tree. The redwoods spread out. You, have, you can take uh, about 25 men and go around the tree, but it takes a lot more than that to go around the root system. The root system reaches out all over. Why? Because it's a mighty giant. It cannot stand unless it has a good root system. And it, it goes out. The church of Jesus Christ is a church that's outreaching. It's reaching to those that are hurting, reaching to those that are lost. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. Let me tell you something, folk. One man in my congregation won over a 1,000 people in just a matter of short time. If we had some soul winners in this church, 
if God would touch some of you and you just win one soul. I live on the ocean, and I've written a book on called Lost and Found. You know, we talk about so many people found Jesus. They didn't find Jesus. He found them. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah. They were lost, but most of them don't know they're lost. They never preach on hell. They don't tell people that they're lost. But they're all lost if they don't know the Lord. They, he came to seek and save that which is lost. And out there you feel that love of God. And it's so easy. You don't have to offend people. Just go to those to whom God sends you. If God sends you to someone, you can say just a few words. They're watching you. They've already heard a sermon. They've seen you a sermon yourself. Yeah, they don't, they don't read the Bible. They read you. And when they begin to look at you, they begin to see, well, that's something. I need, I, need, I need that. What is it? Well, go to that one to whom you're sent. And if you're sent there, They'll receive you. Then you just look at them and you say, hey, look, I would like for you to introduce you to my best friend. Who's your best friend? I don't think that's offensive. I don't, I don't grab them by the throat and say, you're going to hell. I know they are, but I don't tell them that. I tell them about heaven. I think that's better. Praise God. I tell them about the joys of being a servant of the Lord. I tell them about how the, that God will bless them. And they were lost, and they're soon they're going to be rejoicing. Praise God. We had fatted, canvas, fatted calf banquets for converts. That When they came, they brought their people to the Lord. We would see 200, 300 people saved in one service. No, nothing unusual. Nothing unusual. If God does it, God could do it. You know why? <coughs> it's because I don't need anything now. I just need Jesus. It was because I don't drink in the pulpit or don't drink out of it either. But anyway, let me tell you something. It's because people today have never felt the joys of God. There's a joy, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Oh, I say the glory of God is here today. The glory of God is here today. And God wants to deposit something in you. Praise the Lord. Now, the sap, let me talk to you about the inner life. That sap that flows inside of you. The sap of a, of a redwood tree is impervious to disease and all kinds of insects. And it's really fire retardant. They, they use it sometimes, for, they used to use it for fire extinguishers. And, and the, the insides, and let me tell you something. God has a way of putting out those fires. But, you know, he doesn't let some of those fires around us, it burns out in the forestry, choose to let some of that fire burn because it gets some of the underbrush so that some of the seedlings can fall down and they can germinate and come back to life again. you got to die before you come to life. You know that. Well, I look at that and I see that. And I think also the bark. The bark is sometimes is three, four foot, three foot thick, you look at it and you say, well, why? They can take a blowtorch and hold it on it, and it doesn't even burn. Why? God's given them in purges. It, 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 it's impervious to, to burning. God has protected it. I believe God has a church that's going to go through the fire. Some people say, are we going through tribulation? You better believe it. We're in it right now. Everything the devil can throw at the church, they're saying now it's not going to make it. It has already made it. They don't even know what we're doing over here. Yeah, they don't know what we're doing. There's a bunch of parrots over there. They're, they're trying to say that, well, we need some other kind of religion. There's no other religion except Jesus. There's no other way but God. The church hasn't failed. Sometimes we fail, but God hasn't failed. God said, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Glory to God. You can't defeat the church of Jesus. The church of Jesus will stand tall. It'll stand tall. And when that fire comes, it'll shake it off. I'll tell you another thing about it. When lightning comes, it knocks off a limb. It falls to the ground. But God has a way, symmetrically, he, he causes another limb to grow out where that one was. And that limb stands out there as a testimony I'm still standing. 
How many of you are still standing? Yeah, hallelujah. The winds blow, the storm comes, but lightning hits us. But who says God won't grow another limb on it? There'll be another saint that'll come up there, and he'll begin to live with God. And then when that happens, the Lord's got a glorious, glorious testimony. I'm going to tell you there's only one thing that breaks and causes a, a giant to fall. And some of those giants have fallen. Some of those, like the grizzly in, in, in Yosemite area. There's one big tree we used to go through and drive through it. They hollowed it out. The fires hit it. But it wasn't that that really destroyed it. I'll tell you what caused it to go down. There's a certain time of year when the, the ground begins to thaw out and it begins to erode. And the soil gets soft. And then that giant begins to lean. And he leans over a little bit more. And he says, oh, I never felt this before. And he loses his sense of balance. And I think there are a lot of Christians who have lost their balance. They don't have any gravity pull anymore. You know, there are two forces in the world that are pulling at us, the world and God. But I believe the God pull is greater than the world pull. And sometimes the world begins to get us tilting. We lose our sense of balance, our equilibrium. But let me tell you, saints of God, God can correct that. God can correct that. But don't get leaned over. Don't get into crazy doctrines that are not solid in God. Don't listen to some of these preachers that, that tell you you got to do it this way every time. You know, I believe in falling in the Spirit, but you don't have to fall every time you get the Spirit. Amen. There's sometimes, most of the time, he stands you up. And I, I, I sat him down on the front seats and had seen some great miracles happen, not doing what somebody else did. I'm not a copycat. I don't follow them. They follow me. I'm going to tell you something. We need to get a revelation in our spirit. The church was built on revelation. The church has a distinguished message for this work in this place right here. Now, in the name of Jesus... I speak to you growth. I speak to you standing up tall for God. I speak to you now in the name of Jesus that you become a soul winner. Right now, God will turn your mind around and you'll begin to, to introduce people to Jesus. You'll become excited about the Lord for the first time. Begin to tell people what you've met, what's happened to your life. And you'll begin to see what God wants you to see. For more information, please visit our website at blessedsb.com or you can download our free app, Blessed South Bay. Blessed South Bay exists to bring hearts back to God and we do that through various media platforms. If you would like to support this ministry, you can do so online at blessedsb.com. There you can give a one-time donation or consider being a partner for $30, $60, or $100 a month. Please tune in next week as we bring hearts back to God.